beautiful human, Conan Gray, one of my favorite artists and humans, going to be in the studio any second. Uh, but, you know, this episode is made possible by our friends over at Beyond Sleep. I've been sleeping on this mattress called the Vibersonic, and it changed my life because so much in life, Daniel, is connected to how we sleep. That's correct. Sleep matters. So do more with your mattress in addition to getting the best sleep possible with the Vibersonic mattress. There's six speakers built into this thing, so you watch movies differently, you can play video games differently, listen to podcasts differently, meditate. Brain sounds hit different when your bed just kind of shakes them and, I don't know, plays them. It's crazy. The whole experience is wild. If you want to learn more, scan the code on the screen or grab the link below. Uh, I promise you, a better night's sleep is like a click away. By the way, hi, beautiful human. I'm Dan. No, I'm not. I was. Are you? Off to a good start. I'm Zach. So am I. I'm Dan. And I'm Conan Gray. Gray. (laughs) Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. It's a big day, eh? Big day. Were you just Canadian for a bit? Uh, You know, it's really channeled from Australia, but when I say it, people think I'm Canadian. Yeah. Um, no, it's a big day. I announced my third album today. And an album that is, to me, clearly different. But to you, yeah. how is it different than anything else that you've ever made? It is very different from anything I've ever made. My theory about it was, hey, I made two albums, Kid Crow and Soup Break. They're kind of the same thing. They're like brother and sister, you yeah. know? And I was like, eh. I feel like I have to do something different now just for the sake of being like, at least I tried something (laughs) like I just feel like it's fun to try something new and you change and you grow and third album you're allowed to do some weird shit are you allowed to curse yeah Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) weird fuck 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 shit (laughs) (laughs) would you I mean how would you describe what you've done sonically it is definitely a pop album and it's definitely up tempo and like very um, synth and very much me being as ridiculous as possible and not limiting myself in the slightest. What is heaven? So the album title to me is basically a double entendre because it's like, it's called Found Heaven and in the album cover, I'm like this. So like, I think a lot of people when they saw the title first, because I I'd leaked it, like a few days ago, they were like, oh, like, is this going to be like a happy album? But like, no, Found Heaven has two <laughs> meanings. But like, no. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Found Heaven has two meanings to me. And I think Found Heaven is like, um, you know, finding your own happiness and finding your own shit. I, I fell in love for the very first time this past year. Congratulations. Thanks. It did not end well. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. It is a congratulations. Actually, there was a massive relief in even knowing that I could feel those things. And that's also why I named it Found Heaven, because that's like a very happy thing. I was like, wow, I found this thing that made me very happy. And I found out I can have all these emotions. But also, it killed me. (laughs) And I died. And so in the album cover, I'm like dead. But I'm also, like, happy and sad and found heaven. Like, oh, like, Grandpa found heaven. Like, oh, he died. So it's, like, <laughs> being really, really happy but also really, really sad. Well, you, you you can't have one without the other, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you learn things from loving and losing someone. I learned a few things for sure. Yes, you learn a lot. And it was simultaneously, like, the most incredible experience of my life and I wouldn't trade it for anything but it was also just like so fucking gut-wrenching and I thought that people were always exaggerating when they're like oh you're gonna be like sad and like eat a bunch of ice cream and you're like whatever like what and then like you actually do that like that actually happened um it was horrible but it was worth it as somebody who is recently Felt in real love and also received real love for the very first time. I'm assuming this was a mutual love. Yes, <laughs> it was mutual. Yeah, which, which by the way, it like, wasn't. Yeah, for the first time ever, it was mutual. <laughs> Usually, it's you watching know, or fantasizing. Like, they didn't love me back. Like, no, nope, they did love me back, and then they were like, "No thanks." <laughs> Could you describe what it was like to feel loved? 
Um, I would say it was really comfortable, which I wasn't expecting to. I was expecting it to be this like big, like, oh my God, like love. And it wasn't, it was like really quiet and comfortable and happy and safe. I think that love, like when you're loved by someone, and this is also something that I've learned from receiving love from my friends and things. It's like, it's safety, you know, it's feeling like, like everything's going to be okay and that you have their back and they have your back. And to lose that is hard. Yeah, because then you're like, oh, I'm so comfortable and safe right now. And then you're like, what? And you just drop off the face of the earth. So it's like, it's a hard thing. It's very confusing, but it's it's important to put yourself out there. And um, I'm glad that it happened, yeah. It's better to have love and loss than to have never loved you know, before. That's what they say. Yes. But are you writing about love in real time? So, yeah, I think a, a lot of people kind of, are expecting this album to be like a, a breakup album or like a love album. It's what, not what at is all. It? It's my Menace to Society album. Um, I take like a year processing something before I can like really write about it in a way that feels true to what it is. So like this album was very much like me developing my crush on this person, me realizing that this person liked me back and like all these things. And then... I was heartbroken, died in my bed for like seven months, wrote like two sad songs, and then finished the album. Are those two sad songs on the album? Yes. Why did they need to be on there? For closure, I think. I just needed to say what I needed to say. Winner is a song not about... It's no. about your dad. It's about family, I think, to me. It's the one song that doesn't feature like that teardrop star thing. Yeah, it's, um, I think, well, I made it with Greg Kirsten. There's, like, a few songs on the album with Greg, Greg Kirsten and then a um, uh, bunch with Max Martin and Ilya and then um, a few else with this other guy named Sean Everett. Um, but I think the Greg songs do sound a bit different from the, the Max songs. Um, but it's also... Just, um, I think, probably the most vulnerable one on the album. Although there's one other that I think people are going to be interested in. Yeah. Well, how would you, What is most vulnerable? Because, to be honest, it all sounds vulnerable, right? Even writing and heartbreak and looking for, looking for closure, that's vulnerable. Obviously, writing about your family is it's also vulnerable. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's that, like... Um, vulnerable to me in the sense that I've always done it. Like I've always written about my life and written about people and been very specific and, and figured out how to process my, like that's just how I heal. I, I figure out, I, I process and I heal by writing songs and making music videos and, and you know, making stuff. That's how I process my emotions. So um, yeah, it is vulnerable, but it's just like also just what I've always done. So nowadays it doesn't take as much like, I try not to think about it as much these days, yeah. What is it like to find somebody who you can be in a relationship with that accepts you for that? Because that's a big one. Um, I think it's important, but I also think that, like, what? If someone was like, oh, fuck you, <laughs> or, like, <laughs> having a bad childhood, like, what? No, but even yeah. writing about the relationships you're in, right? Like, it's, I mean... Oh, yeah, oh, I mean... Oh, not, I mean, no, I nobody think... should ever fault you for sharing your life and truth through art. Ever, but there is trepidation if you're on the other side, like if you are on the side of the pen, like the receiving side of the yeah. pencil. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know. No one's ever written a song about me. I'm waiting. Yeah, like, oh, but I also think that <laughs> with that there? being said, I think one, this person probably wasn't expecting me to write songs about them. I don't know, but also, if you don't want me to write a song about you, then don't treat me like shit. If you date a musician, they're going to write songs about you, good yeah. or bad. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's just a given. Yeah. So be nice, and then you'll get love songs. <laughs> you know? And then be not nice, and you'll get the other kind of song. And those two songs that give you closure are what kind of song? Uh, both. Both. Both were necessary in this situation. Yeah. First heartbreak is hard. Yes, it is. I was not expecting it. You're making it seem like you got dumped. Is that what happened? Yeah, I got dumped. 
Yeah, I got dumped. Of course I did. <laughs> like, you thought I was going to do the dumping? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You do give, like, someone who, like, once you're in, you're, on, you're holding oh up for dear God. life. Once I'm in, I'm like, please, if you ever leave me, I'll die. <laughs> and you, and you, did you tell him that? Um, I was like, um, no, 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 no. It ended very abruptly without me expecting it. And so there was so little said. And I think Whoa. I'm very bad at... I'm very bad at, like, expressing my emotions um, kind of, like, in real time. I really have to, like, think about what I'm saying. I have to really think about, like, how I want to say it. And I very much think the best way I am telling people how I feel is through songs. So there are songs on here where I very much, like, say how I feel about the situation. But it ended super abruptly, and I was, like, very confused. But so nothing was said, actually. (laughs) That's really hard. Yeah, it is hard. You didn't like search out closure. I would have demanded it. Of course, I searched, but people don't. People don't have to give you closure, you know. Would they block you? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be calling. No, uh, I was actually. Oh, I don't know if I should say this. Um, I was actually uh, dumped sixty thousand feet in the air. <laughs> I was dumped while I was on an airplane. Um, over like text or yes I was like there's a, there's a song on the album about this Wait, so I how I long like was I, this relationship it was essentially on and off for about six months okay and then just kind of died but I was essentially on oh I don't know if I should tell this story ah fuck it whatever um, <laughs> <laughs> um I was like on a plane <laughs> this sounds so fucking pathetic. Um, th- I was on a plane flying to London to see them, and then Whoa. while like, I, and I'd landed, and I like opened up my phone, and it was like dumped, <laughs> like like not n- don't don't want to date you, getting back with my ex, and I was like, <laughs> and then I was just in London, and I was like, hey, <laughs> it was so bad and so awkward <laughs> and so painful. And but I did write some good songs about it, so it's okay. I'm so sorry. No, it wasn't fun. Don't recommend. <laughs> what do you do when you get to London? Um, I uh, it was I had to figure that out, and then I um went and stayed with my friend for a few days and just cried and wrote songs. There's one really good one though that I wrote while I was there, so I was like, oh, that was good. That was worth it. To me, like any pain I experience in my life ever at any time is always worth it if I get a song out of it. <laughs> it's how you justify. Yeah, of course. Are you, in this moment, you're writing instantly? Mm, no. I wrote Found Heaven, and then, um, you know, kind of did that all at once, and then stopped for a long time, because I actually got super, 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 super sick. I was, like, extremely sick with essentially like chronic tonsillitis. So I had like a fever for like seven months. It was so bad. Um, And then it got to a point where I had to take my tonsils out, which hurt so bad. Um, That's like, people make light of that, but it's a serious thing. It hurts. It's like the surgery is like, yeah, you're fine usually, but like it just hurts really bad. And then when you're heartbroken and like in immense pain, it's just like not the greatest combination. But I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can I'm you so tell sorry. I had like the worst year of my life? <laughs> I'm so sorry. But also like a year of incredible <laughs> gr- like gift growth. Like, oh, dude, yeah. the music, your vocals are crazy. Thank you. Like y- the the songs are in another stratosphere. Thank you. It's I don't know like what's going on in these sessions. The sound is so incredibly nostalgic. The lyrics are so honest, but it all feels so present. And you sound, I mean, same yet so different. And your range is fucking crazy. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Thank you. And the layering, we were listening in uh, the other room. Uh, I, I mean, it's superb. Thank like, you. it's really fucking good. Thank you. Yeah, I think it definitely brought out completely new emotions to me falling in love for the first time you know it was all these emotions that I just truly never felt in my entire life so it definitely affected the music and like affected the way I made the music and um 
it's funny because all this there's like so much up tempo on the album Crazy. but like when you pick it apart like all the lyrics are very much like i'm very confused for a lot of the album and um it's a yeah i think i just like had to do something that felt different because i f- i feel different you know i feel forever changed <laughs> how so I think for a long time I thought that maybe there was something like wrong with me. Like, oh, maybe there's something wrong with me and I just like will never fall in love. Or like maybe this just like maybe I'm just unlovable or something. And then now I realize that there isn't anything wrong with me and everything's okay and um things just take time and also when you're someone like me who had questionable childhood, it takes a little longer, you know, it takes longer for you to trust people. So, um, it was actually just like a huge yeah relief to find out that I can have these emotions and I think it took an entire lifetime of healing and feeling safer and safer in my situation to even allow myself to fall in love um and I also think in this situation it was I got really lucky because this was someone that we were just friends like we were always just friends everything was perfectly friendly and normal um so I felt so safe you know I got to really know when you are just friends with someone you get to really know them like not without all these boundaries and all these rules and all these like oh let's define this let's define this you get to really understand someone and then one day we were together and it was just like oh wait we are in love with each other (laughs) um and I think I got really really lucky because of that so it was just a super eye-opening year of my life And this album is all about me being like, holy shit, like, I don't know anything. I thought I knew everything when I was, like, making Super Egg. When I was making Kid Curl, I thought I knew everything. And this album's like, wow, I know nothing. I am so dumb. (laughs) Hey, sorry for the interruption, but the hardest part about eating is making the food. So Factor has solved the problem. They will send you food, ready to go, whatever you want. They got a bunch of different stuff, 35 different options every single week. I love the vegetarian options. Love their salmon. It's really good. Plus, they got great pasta dishes. They got vegan options. Whatever you need, they have it for you. And they send it to your house, and you just pop it in the microwave, and it's ready to go, like in minutes. It's so freaking easy. And it's high-quality meals prepared by real chefs and, like, dietary people who, who who specialize in, you know, feeding us the good stuff. Making sure that we're eating the right stuff. So take a take the work out of eating. Get rid of the hassle and try Factor. I've been using it for a while. I started using it maybe two years ago and now I'm back on it. I love it. If you want to try it out, I'll hook you up. You'll get a 50% off your first box. Ooh. Plus you'll get two wellness shots, which is pretty cool. So try it out. Use the, the code ZaxSang50 when you're checking out. Go to FactorMeals.com slash ZaxSang50. Use the code and you'll save. Happy Ian. Why did you need the difference in vocal style production to accompany the story? That, I think, just came from boredom. Like, I was just bored. I mean, you know, you. I think there's so much music right now that kind of sounds the same. And I'm getting sick of it, of hearing it. Even, like, the, like, whisper songs that even I've made, you know? Like, I spent my entire teens making those songs but like <laughs> whisper songs you call them yeah you know and I'm sad and but and by the way <laughs> okay and then, I love that shit <laughs> no I fucking love it but I've also gotten to a point where I'm like yeah like there's enough of it <laughs> I need to make something else yeah and there has been like a slow progression into it like it wasn't like I mean some of the like uh, memories right mm-hmm. it, it's kind of it's kind of got a little bit of that it's anthemic it's bigger yeah I and kind of like it I don't know somewhere along writing the album I think it was also because I was on tour when I was kind of like playing around with like the first songs on the album that didn't make it on the album. Um, I think like, you know, just performing every night, I kind of wanted to do something a little more dramatic because, you know, when you have the show in in mind, you want to make something that, you know, people are going to like sing along to. Yeah. But people, I don't know. I've been to your shows. They're screaming the whisper songs. Oh, yeah. They scream the whisper songs. I, I don't want to put out there that I don't like. I love whisper songs. I will whisper song for the rest of my life. But I'm just like, okay, in this current 
time I'm going to make something different just because I think other people have the whisper song covered right now. I can just do my, <laughs> do my own little thing. Heather's kind of a whisper song. What? Heather's kind of a whisper Heather's song. Heather's such a whisper it, song. Yeah, it is definitely a whisper it's song. It's a great whisper song, if I say so myself. <laughs> Are you working with Max on, like, Lonely Dancer and, I mean, the, the latest stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, the latest one is Max Martin and Ilya and so, Oscar so Holter. Um, and, yeah, I mean, obviously, he's Max Martin. He's well, the best of the best. And he's also giving uh, disco and nostalgia right now. Yeah, I know. He, well, I think he's also just a huge, like music nerd when it comes to like the 70s and 80s he knows like everything about that era so i think he's having fun as well one of the coolest human beings and the smartest brains to ever exist yes absolutely what are the conversations like when you get in the studio with him for the first time um well i'd kind of known him for a while and i'd worked at their studios for about like five years now um and so by the time we started working together it was very much just like we'd already known each other so um, it was very comfortable and and really fun. This is the first time in my life that I've ever had fun making an album, and I hope that people can like hear that and like see that it was music made out of joy. So y- you say boredom leads you to different vocals, but like I mean, you have to try it out somewhere. You know, I mean, you were belting. The range was crazy. Like, there's some songs where I felt like you had other people on it, but it, I'm pretty sure it was just you. Like. I mean, where do you feel safe enough to explore that and figure that out? I think with someone like with someone like Max, who like I think is always trying to push people to whatever the best version of them can be, and also, um, I think we have a lot of fun because we like to think about music in the sense like, oh, like how can we say this word in a way that like just makes you want to repeat it? Like how do, how can you say these things that make you want to? that make it so fun to sing and like how can you say this line in a way that really tells you what you're trying to say I think um like every single word and every single song is thought out you know you there's care put into every little piece and um there was just kind of a time when we were first working on um the first songs for the album where where I was just like kind of goofily like singing it in this like kind of (laughs) essentially like weird british man accent (laughs) and it just kind of stuck it was just so fun to do and then it just stuck winter's beautiful thank you i mean really really yeah it's really a special song really special why was it important to get that out in the first three singles so i released it kind of in the middle of me being extremely sick i think there was a kind of a, a a moment yeah there was a moment last year where i was really sick and I couldn't really work. Like, I couldn't do th- the normal things. And I think people were like, oh, like, what's going on? Like, why? What's... I'm like, I was just really sick. Like, I was really, really, really sick. Th- so, And it starts with a fever? It started with... Yeah, it started with... Essentially, someone gave me the flu. And then I got... And then that turned into something else. And that turned into something else. And that turned into something else. And I just get, kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. Um, and it was just like... Yeah, it was crazy because I... I I mean, health is something you really, like, take for granted because totally. you have no idea. Um, and it was, like, I felt so out of control, and I was heartbroken. And my f- poor friends were, like, I put them through the friendship ringer this year. <laughs> like, I put them through friendship boot camp because they, oh, my, I, I was the most, like, atrociously down bad you've ever, you could have ever imagined me. Um, I was so sick and so heartbroken. I think I cried for six months straight. My friends, like, literally had to, like, drag me out of bed to, like, eat and to, like, shower. Like, it was so embarrassing. Like, I will oh. never go back. Um, and it was it was good, though. It was good and it was worth it. <laughs> my, heart just, my heart just ached for you. I know. I know. But it's fine. I have this fine, visual guys, of fine. them carrying you out of bed and I like, know. like, I don't know, like towel bathing like you. Like my, my beautiful, <laughs> wonderful friends that are like so, like, angels on earth and they're just like, oh, what do we do with this thing that's like in yeah. my bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all from heartache and heartbreak. Yeah. And I think it was also one of those things where like, you're heartbroken and then you also feel like physically yeah, that's, shitty. So then it just uh, like it makes everything worse. It was crazy. Um, yeah. Crazy to think that possibly one of the worst, but 
also in some ways best years of your life give you the most upbeat, happy album of your career. Totally. Yeah, I know. Like, the craziest year of my life. Um, and I'd, I'd never been happier in my life, and I'd also never been sadder. Um, and I think, yeah, when people listen to the album, like, they should... I think they'll be able to hear that I was extremely happy for, like, the first six months of the year because I was falling in love and everything was amazing. And when you talk about friends, I think about a song from Super A. It's best friends, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, real ones. Like, you learn from those friends. <laughs> I don't know what I have done on this planet or in lifetimes before to have the friends that I have. I feel extremely lucky. I ask myself that all the time. Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah, and it's also... I'm sure this is, like, something that's crossed your mind. It's, it's like, romantic love has always, like, been so foreign to me, I think. But platonic love has been clear as day my whole life. I've always been able to understand it completely. I'm like, wow, yes, like, I, I know how to accept love. I know how to give love in that way. And then you add romance in, and I'm just, like, completely clueless. And I've never dated. <laughs> like, I, I, I just, like, never dated because I was so confused. And, like, it was... <laughs> I don't know what caused. Uh, I actually, I do know what caused it. What? We don't need to talk about it. Um, but I mean, it's pro it probably goes far back. Yeah, it goes far back. It always goes far back. And I think, I think it was just. Uh, yeah, it's like funny because you can have like two forms of love that you think would kind of go hand in hand, but they don't at all. It, it is different. But yeah. is any of that confusion cleared up even through this heartbreak? Yeah. I think so. I think also through writing about them and, and you know, releasing the album and and making videos and doing all that, like, like that's how I figure it out. So I did figure out a lot. It's like, it's funny because usually by the time a song about something comes out, I've usually already kind of processed it. So it's much less heartbreaking by the time it comes out. So, like, I'm already kind of out of that phase of my life, but I'm like... Thank God, like that. Thank you to the song Lonely Dancers for like helping me get yeah. through that, you know. But also, you learn things from a relationship, being in love with somebody and them loving you, like yeah. in a bunch of different ways that you now have experience that you didn't have before that you can carry with you as you, I don't know, love again. Like it's not, it's <laughs> <laughs> not too close up on you. Like that's like. <laughs> I'll try. I'll Are you try. afraid? Of course I'm afraid. No. Of course I'm afraid. Of course I'm afraid. I I think, yeah, if, if I'd even known that this person had liked me, I don't think I would have even been comfortable getting close to them. So it's like, um, yeah, I'm af of course I'm afraid. But maybe now I'm less afraid because I did go through the worst possible scenario. You've done it. Possible. Yes. And I survived. And you've learned things. So it's fine. And I learned a lot. Dude, yeah, you've done things that you with a human being and loved another person that you've never done before. Like with that yeah. comes confidence and, I mean, clarity and some sort of understanding. And I don't yeah. know, like I think also you, I I know a lot more about like what I need or like what I want. Boom. Um, and also just like, yeah, I don't know. It brought it brings a lot of new questions, but also provides a lot of clarity, I guess. It should prove to you that you deserve love and the right love for you is coming. And this one wasn't right, but doesn't mean it wasn't right for what it was worth. You know? Yeah. And it was right for that time. Yeah. And uh, there's like literally no regrets. Like it, it was so worth it. And that's, I think, something I try to tell like the people who listen to my music and what this album so much is about. Like I want people to know like, yeah, like it was devastating. It was detrimental. It was so painful but I would do it again in a heartbeat. And I don't want people to think that just because things can end badly, that it's not worth doing. Fuck yeah. Like you have to let yourself make mistakes. You have to let yourself be in uncomfortable situations um, or also just never grow and change. And um, yeah, I, this album is very much about embracing all of your emotions and embracing the fact that like, yeah, this did end terribly but it was so worth it and i'd do it again fuck yeah yeah you deserve amazing love healthy thank love you, reciprocal love thank you it's coming your way manifest it rub the rub the log dude R rub it this no the log the piece of wood yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's working i'm telling you it's a manifestation thing it's working, guys. <laughs>
oh my god, someone's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Does this breakup, though, make you enjoy being single now? Because you're like, okay, I was in the relationship, I'm single, now I can be a s- single in a different way. Well, you can be single differently knowing things from this relationship. Yeah. Embrace the singleness. You know, when you've embraced the singleness for 25 years of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I feel like you embrace- <laughs> I really want to embrace the singleness. <laughs> but, like, you can embrace the singleness that, it, with the intention of it turning into something more. Like, I mean, do you have any more, like, new confidence in just, I don't know, meeting somebody from an app? Or if somebody's like, hey, go out with my friend? No. Okay. <laughs> but thanks for trying. Is it hard to date as Conan Gray, though? Because you are Conan Gray. I mean, it's hard because everyone's throwing themselves at me. Ah, uh, yeah. And I'm like, dear God, there's not enough of me to go around. Um... <laughs> Um, uh, sure, yeah, of course it's hard. I think it's hard for anyone to date, especially nowadays. True. But, um, yeah, there are aspects of my life that make it a little weirder. Sure, yeah. for sure. What is it about a grocery store? Well, you had a music video be based there, no? The one um, that you dance. You, you, the choreography. That's new, too, eh? Yeah, I started dancing. <laughs> That's huge. The worst year of my life, and I'm just like, oh, like <laughs> dancing around. Like, what? doing i don't know what i i was in a mood clearly like, I'm like oh, I'm like anyways um you really did dance right through it <laughs> grocery store because the first date we ever went on we spent most of it in a grocery store because it started pouring outside so it's, wow, we're really in a, like in a tesco you know they have tescos yeah um in the uk and yeah just so that's mm. why grocery store. Honestly, I'm so annoying. Like, that is so annoying. <laughs> like, but that's why I said this album is my Menace to Society album. It's not my album being like, oh, I love you. It's my album being like, wow, I am going to be as annoying about this <laughs> as possible. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you think this person has any idea of what's in store? Like, did they know that this music video was about the first date? Uh, you know... I do not know. I do not know, and I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> ah, but, ah, whatever. <laughs> but it's cool. It is what it is. I, truth. Yeah. You're living it. Yeah. It is, I mean, it is scary for art to imitate life so sometimes clearly. Yeah. It's it's because, I mean, to me, like, I've always done it, and... The people in my life and the people have, that have been in my life, like, have always understood, like, that that I do that. So it's not uncomfortable. And also, like, this person knew that, too. So Buckle up. It is what it is. Fuck yeah. How did you know Lonely Dancer was done? <laughs> um, I think I knew it was done once. Um, once I'd made... The music video like once i had the idea for the music video in my mind there was like peace i was like yeah um which have you seen the music video did we no. play it for you oh just i've listened to the song a bunch though um well the music video comes in a few days um but wait when does the song is the song this week next no, week yeah next week february 9th got it i'm yeah. just trying to keep yeah i have no concept of time at all yeah, me either. I mean, there's no windows in here, so it's weird. It's very much like a casino. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you just start pumping oxygen through the vents. Uh, so, okay, is that how it works for most songs? Like when you can see the visuals, and like at what point in the creative process does that usually come? Uh, it it either comes like immediately, like as I'm writing the song, or it comes like at the very very end. Um, but I I I care a lot about music videos and every music video I've ever made has been written by me and very much like like I know exactly what frames I want. I know exactly how I want because also making those films and making those that form of art like is also how I process my pain. So um yeah, music videos mean everything to me and it's kind of sad cuz they're like a dying totally breed. Truly. I don't think, like, people, maybe music listeners don't realize, but, like, music videos are dying. Like, How, how people, do you save the music video? I have no idea. Um, I think because of, like, short-form content, there's, like, just music videos are a dying thing. Um, but back in the day, music videos used to be, like, the only way you could promote a song, so it's just not that anymore. But I love music videos, and it's sad to see them going. 
He really is sad. Maybe they'll come back, though. I don't know. I mean, would love to like have an option so I can see them when I'm streaming on Amazon Music or on Spotify or something. Yeah, maybe we just need to integrate them better. Yeah. I don't know. I love music videos. They, I love seeing a visual representation of something. Yeah, it explains so much. Yeah, it does. And, and it helps you feel so much more like the song matters. No, I want a music video, and then I would love a conversation about the album with the artist. If you can give me those three, I feel exactly. fed. Yes. And I just want to feel, feel fed. That was a scrumptious meal. Yeah. I can leave. That's it. Yeah. Is that too much to ask for? Apparently. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Damn. It is crazy. How'd you know this album was done? There's There was the very last song that I wrote on it, which I wrote about. <laughs> I very much wrote about being in London, being just freshly dumped and being like, what what am I doing? Um, where am I? Where are you? Um that was the last one. I wrote that in London, and that was, um, that was when I knew it was the end. Um, I have goosebumps. Like, I have this visual of you at the airport in London <laughs> opening up your phone, and it's it's heart-wrenching. Yeah, I was, like, literally, like, in the plane. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh. It was really. Um, but also, like, how... How, what a great story. <laughs> like, <laughs> how comical is that? Like, that's awesome. I could not have been broken up with in my first love ever in a better way. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. I feel like that's much of the life of Conan Gray. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I very much have a life that sounds like it was written for, like, a really fucked up musical. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> like, and then when I tell people about my, like, childhood, they're like, they're like, you're making that up. I'm, I, I wish I was. But I'm not. And by the way, I would just say reference, I don't know, any of the other past interviews you've done with Conan Gray to get an understanding. I don't need to rehash it all. I do, like, always go back and forth when, like, somebody comes back on the show to, like, go through it all again. But then I'm like, do you really go through it all again? Uh, I don't know. No, probably not. No. So we'll, we'll link them below. We'll link them. Oh, there's that first one was so good. Yeah. So funny. It's <laughs> <laughs> You're in a unique stage of life in that moment. Like yeah. there's like a this, Do you think of young Conan often or ever? Um I do, I actually have thought about him a lot recently because I think as I get older, the more I return to who I was when I was like 14. I think the older I get, the more I like, I'm like, wow, I really do have a weird obsession with biology <laughs> and I love Pokemon. <laughs> like, you know, like <laughs> I think all these things kind of like come back to me. Um, and also the people in my life who are also, you know, we're all growing up together. They're like, I'm also seeing that in them. Like they're becoming the same person they were when they were 14 before they had all these thoughts of who they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. And so, yeah, like also when I was younger, I had an obsession with primary colors. Like it was so there was something so wrong with me, um, clearly. But like I couldn't wear clothes unless they were primary colors. Like it would like drive me crazy. And now it's like back. Like I'm like covered. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like I looked like at You're wearing like, no. it right now. Yeah, you're wearing primary colors. I know. It just like all primary. They're they're bright. And the album cover is just like yellow. Like it's like I just I uh, I don't know. I I. I love him. I'm like, what a cool guy. I can't believe I was ever so self-conscious and hated myself so much. But that's a part of life in the process, right? Of yeah. understanding who you are. Yeah. I want every, like, 14-year-old listening right now to know that you're going to love yourself in 10 years. You're going to be like, wow, what a cool person. That is such vital advice because it's true. Yeah. Like, a part of loving yourself and understanding yourself is, quite frankly, fucking hating yourself. It's true. It's true. It's... It's really a part of it. Yeah. Damn. It's really special to be able to l listen back to your music and hear life, though, and to hear growth. And yeah. To it's hear. It's weird. Yeah. It's like. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I can, like, hear, you know, the songs I wrote when I was, like, 17 on my first EP, and, like, I sound younger. And it, like, makes me want to cry when I think about it because I don't know. Are you really talking about Sunset up. Season? Yeah, Sunset Season. I, like, grew up in f making music and talking about my life, and it's, like, all time-capsuled there. And obviously, like, I'm sp just going to keep growing up and stuff. But, like, it's just very, I don't know. I feel very lucky that um, people cared enough about what I had to say to let me keep talking about it. it. That is really wild to wrap your mind around. 
Yeah. That like we're very deep into this discography and just along the way people have been added to the community. You're not subtracting and people feel so deeply understood by these records, myself being one of them. So good. Thank you. Your music is so fucking good. Thank you. No, you should be really proud. And this is such a beautiful evolution. It's really different as a real fan of yours who's like listen to your stuff over and over and over again, like deeply, 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 not prepping for a fucking interview, just in life. It is such a great, it, it, just moment of growth. It's really cool. It's really Thank cool. You. Thank you. Yeah, I felt like it was a year just about growth in general. So I really needed like a physical kind of visual, tangible thing that I could see like, oh, I have changed. And so I needed to like change the the way I dressed and I needed to change the way I sounded so that I could like kind of put in a physical thing like, oh, I am a different person. Things changed. But also I think the the people who've been listening since I was, you know, 16, 17, I think they can, they know secretly that it's also just like very much a regression to who I was back then. Um, so it's, it's been very, yeah, it's been kind of magical. It's wild. What are you thinking? You're not a big fan of collaborations, are you? Have not you done really. any other than the Lauv one? No. And I think to me, I, I wouldn't do one unless I had a conviction to. And I don't. I don't. I also have, like, two friends. I wouldn't, like, do a collaboration, <laughs> like, with someone who I don't know. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, one of your two friends is a pretty big artist. Yeah, she's a good singer. I've yeah. heard of her. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's, like, I don't think I would make music with someone else. I felt really comfortable with them. And um, that's not to say that I'm not going to make more friends. Actually, one of my big goals of this year is to make more acquaintances. Huge. Yeah. You can do that. I'm trying. I've been going on friend dates like once a week. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Really? I'm trying because because I'm someone who I'm very like all or nothing. I'm like, I love you and you're my soulmate and everyone else can disappear. Um, but that's not that's not very healthy. I think I think I mean it's fine. But I think also, you know, you need like you know, it takes a village, you know? Like you need like different friends and I'm trying to get better at having like casual friends in my life and like going outside. <laughs> How are you finding these friends dates? Who's setting you up on these? Where are you finding them yourself? I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize a friend. Are you here. like Tinder for friends? No. I think that exists. The uh, dating apps scare the shit out of me. I don't know how people go on there. It's crazy. Um no, I just DM people on Instagram. What? I'm like, hey. <laughs> hey, are you looking hey. for a friend? Hey, let's get coffee. I mean, maybe they probably all they probably all think I'm hitting on them. Maybe I am. I mean, that's the the way the last one started, right? Yeah, friendships sometimes I, turn into other things. I see you. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe I'm just collecting a roster of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, guys. <laughs> In like six months' time, you look back. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's I come back with like a posse. <laughs> 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 oh man! Uh, <laughs> what are you thinking? I love when Conan comes by. Yeah, I love yeah. coming by. No, it makes me. Yeah, it makes me very happy. Thank you for always coming by. Genuinely. Yeah, I do come by here. Well, it's been a, <laughs> no, it's been like a year and change. Yeah, year and change. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, you come back like healthy. It's healthy. The the gaps. Yeah, I have different hair every time. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. you That's made music with Olivia though, right? Ever. No, I mean, Liv and I have written together, but just, like, for funsies. But never, we we don't have... I think also it's, like, I don't know. There, I think with friends, you just want to have friends and be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and um, she's just so talented. It's so fun to watch her do her thing. And she's going on tour soon. I can't wait to go to that show. By the way, like old people have the phrase like you don't shit where you eat, you know. You don't yeah, like you mix don't business where you eat. and That's pleasure. True. You don't like friendships and like I don't know, also like friendships are very special and you preserve those with everything you have and I don't know. There's it's different. Friendships are everything. And I think uh 
Yeah, like sometimes you like see a collaboration out in the world and you're like, those people have never met. (laughs) And I don't know. That's just not really my vibe. So that maybe that's why I don't do collabs. But where do you draw the line at writing for funsies? Like, what if writing for funsies turned into a really good song? If you write a really good song, then you're like, hell yeah, but uh, we haven't written anything. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. We haven't written anything yet. <laughs> How do you prepare for a session? Do you write mostly on your own and then walk in with it? Or? Yeah. I write on my own, but uh, and then I bring stuff in. But uh, with Max and with Ilya, we also kind of did this thing where... Um, we would just text back and forth and call each other. And like sometimes, like he'd wake up with some like weird melody and he'd be like, What if we like did something? It's like, dun, 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 dun. And I'm like, Oh, what if we like put these words to that melody? Um, it was just like a very kind of playful back and forth. And um, yeah, I, but a majority I write on my own and then bring it in. So are you writing to production that they've given you already? No. Or no, we write from scratch. Really? Yeah. So abs- I can't write to production. I write the worst fucking song you've heard if it's like <laughs> to production. It's I can't do it. It's really? just it, I think it like sterilizes the vibes. So it starts literally with lyrics. Yeah, lyrics are just like a melody like into the air. Like wow. um yeah, with with Lonely Dancers Max just called me and was like like I just have this like what if like we there's this melody that's been stuck in my head like dun 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 dun, dun. and then I was like Okay, <laughs> and then he was like, "Try, like, try. Can you like try to put some words that?" I was like, yeah, "I'll try." And then I like tried, and um, yeah, it was like kind of uh, in the middle of me being in this, yeah, very like on and off, super confusing thing. And it was kind of one of the first times that I'd been ghosted by this person and didn't really know what was going on. And so, Lonely Dances is about me like essentially trying really hard not to have a meltdown. By instead just being like, <laughs> <laughs> which but, is so me. You must have felt safe enough to share this with Max, right? Or no? Yes, of course. Yeah, you have to be like friends with people to totally. write good songs with them. So you At least I do. Max Martin's a friend. Three friends, guys. Max Martin, <laughs> Ilya, Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, that's all you need. I mean, fuck. <laughs> that's if all you boy stop I need. There, like that's <laughs> fucking good. Did Dan work on the album at all? No, he didn't, actually. That's a change. It is a change. Dan and I are still very close. I'm actually seeing him tonight. Acquaintance or friend? Do we add him to make a force? or? He's honestly, at this point, more like a family member. Okay. So, um, okay. And that's kind of what I'd, I'd say the same for, like, Liv and for, for Max. And, like, my friend, my best friend back home is a girl named Ashley. Like, they're family. Like, they're not my friends. Like, you don't, like, I, I spend all my holidays with them. Like, I don't, they're my family, so. Ashley's an icon. I've never is, met her. I just know of her from our conversations. Yes, she is Wait, the love of my life. Can I ask her, how did you and Olivia meet? We met because of Dan. She started working with Dan, and I was already working with Dan. Um, And it was also COVID, so we didn't see anyone. You know, we uh. never saw anyone our age. We never, like, we would just go to the studio and then go home. And so we met essentially in passing at the studio and then started DMing. But I'd actually messaged her way before she even started working with Dan because I heard this song that she'd written called All I Want for High School Musical. So and good. I thought to myself, I was like, this is one of the best songs I've heard in years. And uh, so I told her, I messaged her just out of, I didn't know her at all. I just messaged her and I was like, you're an amazing songwriter. And then we met at the studio after that. That's really special. Yeah, I mean, she's... So important to me. You learn a lot from friends, and also like yeah. you become a better person. But yeah, with those those you surround yourself with, she's a so very good like... advice giver, which I think people who listen to her music can tell because she's almost like giving advice all the time in her music. You can either like go like wrong with the people you surround yourself with, or incredibly right, and you've gone incredibly right. I'd like to think so. Fuck yeah. I love my friends. I think they're good people. And you're looking for more acquaintances. And I'm looking for more acquaintances. But really, you're looking to just get some <laughs> fun. So, like, be, let's be honest. I guess so. so I'm not judging you. No one here is. I gotta do my thing. It's, it's your process. You figured it out. Yeah, I figured it out. I, you, Friendship dates. Let the man work. Might turn into more. <laughs> <laughs> Let me cook. Yeah, go. go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I never really got the answer about why Dan isn't working on this project. Oh, he was working on, uh, he was very much working on Guts. Oh. And then I was primarily in Europe, in London, and in Sweden. So it just kind of didn't, 
there was no kind of time that made much sense. Yes, yeah. no, that makes um, sense. And also with Dan, like I think the reason why his music is so good and why he, you know, makes these really cohesive albums and very like very very sonically is because when he works on something like that's what he's working on and mm-hmm. he doesn't get distracted with uh, other things and I think that's a beautiful thing and I was like I'm not gonna fuck this up like just do your thing um but in turn you also got to challenge yourself in new ways yeah I think also it was like yeah it was my third album I was like I, I need to make some more acquaintances yeah I need <laughs> I need to like go I need to go outside and try new things and discover things and learn things and um I think it was a very beautiful process for I mean, all of us. There's no way we would have gotten this album if you would have just kept doing what you were doing with the same collaborators. No, it would have sounded very, very different if I'd um, not changed any of the people I was working with. Um, but also, I was quite surprised to hear like how much, like, like I, I was surprised to hear like what actually stayed the same versus what didn't, um, which was really funny to hear. And, and like, what was it? I mean. I think lyrically, like, I'm just always going to be the same. Like, no matter who I work with, that's just, I just write in a very specific way. Um, And then, like, sound-wise, I was like, wow, like, I did not know I could sound like that. I did not know I could, like, do these things. And um, I don't think I would have ever discovered that side of myself unless I was in a new world, yeah. It needed to happen. I think it needed to happen. Meant to happen. But... Dan is my father, so. <laughs> <laughs> Again, family, not friend. Family, not friend. I'm not my trying. fucking friend. You're not my fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you continue to give timeless. Thank you. So, yeah, that's very rare to give and not something I say to everybody, but you give fucking timeless. Thank you. I, I think if you are always doing something that you like, then hopefully has nothing to do with culture you know what i mean mm. i think like obviously the culture will always like affect you and change you and da, 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 da. but like i think with this album especially i was like i'm just gonna do what i want to do everyone might hate it and think it's fucking horrible but like at least i did what i wanted to do i think that's important you're making art for you i am and I had so much fun doing it. It was so fun. Until it wasn't. At what point wasn't it fun? Mm, probably about, yeah, about a year in. Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, I have never felt more lost in my life. But that's because of life. <laughs> yeah, that was because of life. It had nothing to do with the album. But that's, it's part of living. Yeah. Is feeling lost and then yeah, getting answers. It really is just a constant, like up and down and I have been alive long enough to know that every time you go down you're always going to go up and then anytime you're up like you are going to go down it's it's a hard like pill to swallow genuinely but I don't know it's life not that hard to swallow when you have your face on a cappuccino (laughs) that's so weird oh god it looks really weird now it's melted now by the way we have a coffee machine that like will print photos on coffees yeah my face is on a cappuccino right now fancy i would show you but then i'd pour it on the ground <laughs> <laughs> final thoughts daniel have you thought tharted tharted that's not i thought all the time you i'm glad lot? you brought it up <laughs> <laughs> have you started to think about what this album would be like live oh my god yes sounds oh, yeah i can't wait i can't wait to sing it live um it's an album that i think i designed to be fun live yeah that's what i was picking up from it yeah and um I have my secrets, Mm. and I have my plans. Are you grateful for everything (laughs) you've been through? Fuck no. No, No, I'm so grateful. I wouldn't wish it on anyone else, but I uh, am terrified of the thought of who I would be if I hadn't been through the things that I've been through. So, um, yeah, extremely grateful, but I would not wish it on anyone you moved nine times. At a certain phase of your, of your life, it was hard for you to make friends, and now you have an amazing base of human beings that will literally bathe you. <laughs> I know. That's... I don't know what happened. I feel so lucky. So I have, like, such intense imposter syndrome, especially the past few years of my life, where I'm like, why are things so good? I'm so confused. Um, 
But then other things happen. You're like, oh, okay, okay. It's not that good. (laughs) 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 But I don't know. I will say, like, yeah, friends are something I've always been able to understand. And even if I didn't have a lot of friends growing up, like, I always had one friend that, like, was my partner in crime. And, yeah, I think a lot of people kind of water down the significance of a friendship. And um, a friendship is everything. And, like, when I see, like, people who are in their, like, 60s and with their best friends, I'm like, I hope to God that my friends are still my maximum priority when I'm 60. You got to turn your mic on. It'll happen. Sorry. <laughs> Final thoughts? Yeah, you know what I think, and I actually stole this from a comment on TikTok, mm. is you showed <laughs> off, like, a uh, unreleased verse from Heather not too long ago. Mm. Would you ever go back and release, like, a, or Ooh. record, like, a longer version with the unreleased verses? And does that exist for other songs? It exists a lot with Heather because I wrote that song for so many times and rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it. So when I opened up the the notes that I have of all the lyrics, it was crazy. Like I opened up my notebook and there were just insane lyrics in there. I was like, oh my God, I was so depressed and I hated myself so much. I felt so bad for him when I was reading I was like, what happened. But there's so many alternate verses that I could probably make like a 20 minute long song with how much I wrote for Heather. But I think Heather is um, what it is because I wrote, 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 and then chose what I thought was the best. And I do still think that the verse that I chose was the best one out of all of them. Um, but I I would love to. Heather, you know, like, you know, there's like artists who like hate their biggest song. Like I am the opposite of that. <laughs> I've never been more <laughs> proud of a song in my life. Like, that song means everything to me. And it was my favorite song from the second I wrote it. And the fact that other people felt that way, too, made me feel narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> Where does, uh, um, why did I just blank out? Uh, um, fuck. All I wanted to do was ask you about the song, and I just blanked on its name. And I literally had it in my brain. I was ready to say it. Oh, I smoked too much weed. God damn yeah, it. I did ketamine before this. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you know me. I'm tripping. <laughs> you don't drink, do you? Or no, yeah. I don't. I don't do any drugs. Oh. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never been high. I love that. I've n- I, I, I drink like twice a year for mm. like celebrations. Like a glass of champagne. Congrats. Yeah, but I don't get like plastered. Yeah. What do you drink? Uh, a gin and tonic. Nice. Oh, classy. Yeah, it's like kind of an old man drink. But they're so good. I like how they taste, like, sharp. (laughs) They're also, like, so good that I'm like, "Mm, I should never, never drink these because they're really tasty. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I understand why people get addicted to these things. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't do them. I hate the taste of alcohol, yet I still find a way to drink it. Yeah, I, I just don't. I also don't like the feeling of, like, being, like, crazy and drunk. And also, I'm not a fun drunk. Really? Like, are you fun drunk? I, I don't maybe are you fun I am drunk? the most fun really like I'm you're ha- like I'm having the time of my life I can really. either be fun or like just totally out of it and not wanting to be there yeah I'm like a very quiet really sleepy drunk like the second mm-hmm. I drink any amount of alcohol I just get really like like really like sleepy and like quiet and weird and my friends <laughs> are like what is going on with him <laughs> um but yeah <laughs> I like the the one time I got drunk uh, two years ago, I guess, yeah, two years ago was when I played Coachella. Like afterwards, my friends and I were like, oh, like we have to celebrate. I had one gin and tonic, got plastered, <laughs> like was plastered <laughs> off my mind, like in a way that was unbelievable. I think because I was just so like stressed the whole day that like my body was like, oh my God, nutrients. And then it wasn't nutrients, <laughs> it was poison. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> and I I don't want to know the things that I said to people. I think I walked I walked out into, like, the crowd of just, like, general, of just, like, the plebeians. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I walked out into, like, the crowd of just, like, Coachella and started, like, talking to people. And they were like, oh, like, like where are you from? I'm like, 
You're like, I'm from San Francisco. I'm not from San Francisco. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was doing. Like, I w- it was crazy. And there's, like, definitely pictures of me where I'm like, boo. And I'm that's like, also ah. off of one drink. One drink. Wow. I'm the m- most intense lightweight of all time. I should, I don't drink. And I, I, there's nothing in me that wants to. And I also think, like, a lot of my friends, like, we all kind of don't drink. It's not really our vibe. I'm just imagining you walking through the crowd of Coachella, slightly drunk with that pink dress on, trying to go incognito. <laughs> just like nobody can see me. Like, guys, guys. It's not me. <laughs> I'm from San Francisco. <laughs> like pink, bright pink. <laughs> it was so crazy. Uh, but it was, yeah, that was definitely a moment. I was like, yeah, I should never do this ever again. <laughs> Does it sound like people watching mean something different to you today than when you first made it? Ooh, I haven't thought about that. Um, I guess I have felt that love and emotion, so I don't know. Um, it's, I think, yeah, I, it feels a little like, um, like I definitely, it validated my thoughts, essentially, because that song is all about, like, what is it going to be like to be Mm. in love? I want to understand. And now I do do understand and it was definitely a really intense experience so I understand why back then I wanted to know is it's what you thought it was going to be honestly yeah yeah it was everything I thought it was going to be does it make it any easier um no it doesn't it was actually way more like what I thought it was going to be than I even wanted you know like you watch all these movies and you listen to all these songs and you're like, I don't get it. Like, why are they singing about this shit? Like, I don't understand what you mean. And then it happened and I was like, oh, what the hell? It's like exactly like what you were talking about. Like, I kind of always thought everyone was in on this big joke about it. And then I was like, no, they just like, it just really like, you become literally delusional and you like think (laughs) that you can float. Like, it's crazy. It's a crazy feeling, it, but it's also like a hundred percent like a weird genetic like endorphin rush. So mm. of course you kind of feel like you're like on drugs the whole time. You'll find it again. Yeah, I think so. Uh, mm. <laughs> Come on, I don't manifest don't, positivity here. I want to be hurt again. That hurt so bad. If it, no, I'm being a bad example. But maybe the next time won't hurt as bad I will be or hurt again. ever. Maybe. You never know. Gonna marry the next person I yes, meet. Yes, you got to keep swinging. Not m- next person you meet. Relax. But like <laughs> next person, maybe you form a relationship with. Yeah. And invest time, energy, and love into. Yeah, I think so. So, come on, positive energy here. Are you happy you're in love? Yeah, I yeah. am. I've learned a lot from being in love, and I'm really, I'm happy. Like What's very, your very happy. Lesson. Um, I mean, prioritizing somebody else, getting to understand. Somebody else and how they work and operate, understanding somebody else's wants and needs and prioritizing them against my own. It's a lot of compromise. A hundred percent, but in, in a beautiful way because it doesn't feel like compromise when it's the right person. Not at all. Because, You're like, of course. Yeah, duh. You just, you don't think twice. And it, it, and a lot of that is because you want them to achieve the best and their full potential. And it, you, I very much feel like I'm sharing, I live a life, but I also share that same life with somebody else. And we share a life with each other. It's really special. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. But like it, it took a long time to get here and a lot of a lot of shit and a lot of I mean terrible stuff. But this is real. And I've never felt love like this before. And I always I, I thought before I maybe n- knew what love felt like. And mm. this has totally redefined it for the better for me. Like yeah. it's actually given me a true definition of love. Yeah. In, in a way that I've never seen or felt or understood before. Yeah, it's like a lot better than you think it's going to be. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is safe and security and to have a real partner and there's something in that that is just really precious and. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, really it's special. Yeah, it's a very, also like it's like a very like, I kind of always thought it would be this like big, loud thing. It's like a very quiet emotion. Mm. It's like very like, I don't know, like everything in the world like turns down. It's the best feeling ever. That's the right way to describe yeah. it, too. Because I think social everything, you know, sounds different. Everything, like, so many other, so many things that were around matter less because you're in love with somebody and there's, I don't know, it's really different. Uh, but in the most beautiful way, it's, priorities really shift. Mm. Oh, I feel like you're sad right now. No, I'm 
so happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, it is. It's so, yeah, it's weird to think. It's also, like, not that. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so, like, I'm, like, a little. Yeah, this is fresh. It's a little fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going on a friend date this week? Yeah, I am. I am going on a friend date. We're going to get coffee and talk shit. Sick. That's, like, the best thing you could ever do, right? Yeah. Get coffee and talk shit. Is this a new friend or? Yeah, new friend. Oh, wow. It's, but it. See, the thing is, I have a lot of people that, like, I've known for, like, five years. I just never, like, really got to know them. Like, and I've just met them in passing. And so I'm, like, challenged myself to basically, like, reach out to all those people that I'm, like, oh, like, every time I meet you, I really like you. I don't know why we aren't friends. It's, like, oh, it's my fault that we're not friends. Like, we, so I go, I've been going out of my way to be, like, let's get coffee. Oh, that's very special. Don't be offended that he didn't reach out to you, Dan. It's coming. You're yeah. on a really, like, you're on a, the list is really long. I know I'm on there. Yeah. And you're on there. I'm not going to say where, <laughs> but you're on there. Number yeah. 937. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, yeah. It's around there. It's <laughs> 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 a good guess. <laughs> hey, at least I'm in the top thousand. Uh, yeah, I never said you're on there, Zach. They, yeah. <laughs> mm, how about that? It's, it's, mm. uh, oh. mm. Interesting. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can listen to all Conan Gray's music. It's waiting for you. Uh, there's a link in the description below. You can stream it on Amazon Music. And uh, I really appreciate you as always. Thank you for having me. You really are one of the most special people who have ever been on our show. Oh, whatever. Special, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with that. Special in a lot of ways. No, you're absolutely incredible. Thank you. You really are one of a kind. There's nobody like you. And you're going to find the love that is right for you and you're going to make somebody very, very happy one day and you're going to complete them the way that you deserve to be completed. And yeah, I, yeah, good Thank shit's you. coming your way. Thank you. And you should be proud of this music as it's fucking spectacular. Thank you. Final thoughts? Yeah, it must have been nice to write lyrics and songs about like real people instead of just things you made up in your head. Oh, so fun. Yeah. So much easier too. I would imagine so. <laughs> so much to say. <laughs> I would imagine so. That's great. It's like the first time we ever like actually dated someone, not just like, I, I met someone yeah. and I created this life in my head. It wasn't real. You can just be like street name. Like, like it's like so much easier. <laughs> like that's a that's a, like a hack, like a life hack when yeah. you're writing a song. Just get your heart broken by like an actual person. And then <laughs> Well, because genuinely before it was like you were writing about things that you were never experiencing. I know. Imagined there this, about. There was that one person that you write like you kept writing about this one person. For like five years. Oh, it might have been seven years, honestly. And you never dated this person. No. Never I, even kissed. <laughs> and now we have a real, real person. I yeah. remember the one of the first, maybe the first time we interviewed you, we asked you about this person and or like maybe kissing them, and you were just like, "Yeah, we've never, I've, no. I've never even kissed somebody." No, no, I hadn't kissed anyone at that point. Uh, I have since then kissed people for some reason. I think maybe I didn't think I had to like make an announcement about it, but like my fans for some reason like still thought that I have never <laughs> kissed someone. <laughs> like guys, come on! I know I'm a loser, but not that. <laughs> I mean, it's been years. It's been <laughs> literally six years since then. I'm sorry. Like, um, oh, yeah. imagine if you went six years since that moment and you still hadn't kissed anybody. Like, no judging. Like, there's reasons why people would never kiss someone, but like, not me though. I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about the seven year person anymore? Oh, yeah, totally. Really? Oh, yeah. I follow them on my stalker Instagram account. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. They became like, I don't even know. I could have never predicted the person that they became. It was awesome. It, did they know that you were into them? Yes. They actually came to my show without telling me. <laughs> this was, I don't know. I feel like I've said this before. I, yeah, I played a show after, I'm, I must have been 19, like after I wrote some music about them and they bought a ticket and came. And I was singing a song. I was singing Lookalike about them. And I looked into the crowd and standing there. And I was like, it was insane. I, yeah. And was that the last time you were ever in the same room as yeah, this person? it was. Wow. They texted my uh, best friend like a few times because I'd had their number blocked. Um, I'm just uh, so confused. Like, did you tell this person you were in love with them or? Yeah. And it didn't go... The way you had planned? Um, it went the way I'd planned and also not. It was like a... It, 
essentially the feelings were reciprocated, but then I moved to California and was like, fuck you. I don't ever want, want to see you again. It was a very like uh Wait, they did love you back. Yeah. But they couldn't really like deal with it. Interesting. You think your you think your entire life is just building up to you two getting together one day? I sometimes think about that, yeah. yeah like kind of especially because my life has just changed so much from high school. So sometimes I'm like, maybe it was all because of this one. Cause also like all my best songs are about this one person. Like maybe, maybe it is just like destiny, but no, no, but also no, like no, uh, from what I've gained from my stalker Instagram account, I don't think we, I don't think we could even sit on a couch together. Really? So different. Very, very different people. Yeah. Wow. Like you, would you even recognize the person? If I hadn't followed them on my stalker Instagram account? No, no. When you, when you see them in the crowd, do you put on, like, the best show of your life, or does the show get worse? So I kind of always thought that it was going to be, like, this feeling of, like, fuck yeah. Like, I'm on stage in my sold-out show, and you suck. <laughs> it was actually not that feeling. It was, like, immense sadness. I felt so bad. I felt so, so, so bad for everything that happened. Wow. Because, yeah, when you see, like, I think when you've had distance from someone, you, like, can really build things up in your head and like kind of almost forget that they're like a real person, mm -hmm. you know? And then you see them again in person. You're like, at the end of the day, at some point I, I loved you and we were really close. You know, once you break that like physical barrier, all of a sudden it's like, well, we're just humans, you know? Heavy. It's true. But I actually, for, I, I think I've written better songs about other people since then. Guess we'll find out on this album. Guess we'll find out. Coming soon, found heaven. Coming soon, coming April 5th. You can find out. <laughs> Stream all of Conan's <laughs> music, it's waiting for you. Click the link in the description below. You good? I think so, are you good? I, you? I, yeah, I've, we've covered a lot here. Yeah. I feel fed. I feel like... Yum. Does the logo <laughs> mean anything, or is it just something yes, you came up with? it does. To me... So it's, it's a teardrop, it's a star inside of a teardrop, and... What it is in my mind, I'd started drawing it on everything when I was first making the album, and it's just a reminder to me that there is immense beauty and immense magic in allowing yourself to feel mm. emotions. Mm. I spent so much of my life completely turned off. Like, all of my emotions just, like, shut them down. Don't think, don't feel, just Conceal, don't feel, don't let. I just started quoting Frozen on accident. Um, <laughs> just like completely turned off to the world. And this album was all a challenge to me to allow myself to just feel everything. And I wore this around my neck the whole year as a constant reminder that anytime I felt like, oh, I don't want to think about that. I'm just going to like not think about that. Like, no, think about it. Like process it, feel it, let yourself do things. Um, there's so much more joy found in actually experiencing something um, than just not experiencing anything at all. So it's a little star because the star is like, you know, magic and happiness and joy. And then the teardrop because you cry when you're both very sad and very happy. Oh. That's like really that. beautiful. Yeah, I like that. I really appreciate you, Conan Gray. I appreciate you too, Zach Lane. Is Thanks that your real name? Yeah, 100%. Do you have a middle name? Uh, Ryan. Okay, well, okay, silence, Zachary <laughs> Ryan Sang, okay? I'll... Okay, got it. Okay, fuck. Two first names. Damn, dude, yeah, it's rough. I don't know, What? how would you Wait. constitute a middle name? A middle like, name has to be something like what's not your, a first name. What's your middle name? Lee. Oh, that's good. Like the jeans. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that flows nicely. Conan Lee Gray. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. What's Yours is Adam, isn't it? Daniel Adams a lot. That's two first names. Adam or Adams? Adam. Don't most people have? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Name. That's what I'm saying. Carlos? And uh, that's what I'm saying. I've heard Henry so King Lee's. I'm the weird one here. Yeah. yeah, but I know Lee's. Like, I know like people named Lee. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I do too. Is it L E E or L E H? L E E. Wow. It's -E -E. like the Irish Lee. That's a good spelling. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good spelling. Thanks. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> anyway, Conan Gray, everybody. <laughs> Listen to his music. There's a link in the description below. I really appreciate you. Thanks appreciate for being you too. here. Thank you. Conan. Woo!
Wait, are you still a crow? Do you still yeah. consider yourself a crow? Yeah, I am. I'm re- I'm regressing for so, sure. Okay, you're not like you haven't morphed into another bird. No, still a crow. Cool. Stand by that. <laughs> okay, healthy. Yeah. Conan Gray, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 